Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today, uh, well this is the first video of the new year actually, and uh, got my new Christmas shirt on. Mum made this, had this made. Thanks mum, see? Pretty cool eh? I'm going to actually be putting a boiler seat over this so I don't screw it up, because this is my favourite shirt now. So anyway, um, you've seen part one of the door repair already. I'm still working on the second part of that. But um, in the interim, uh, I also for, for Christmas got a uh, steam cleaner to help with degreasing the engine and all inside, getting all that crap out of the way and not introducing too much water there. So the steam cleaner I figured was the best solution. Um, I'm going to do a little video coverage on how I went about steam cleaning the engine. I've done one side, I've saved the other side for a later video. But anyway, that got me on to this next little project. Uh, that had been uh, nagging at me to get on with so I removed the AC uh, compressor the big York AC compressor that was right up in the corner right next to the frame there once I took that off gave me really nice access to the underside of the frame rail on the passenger side um, here on this side so um, I went over it um, as you know, I've already removed a lot of the undercoating, all that flaky undercoating with my removal tool. And uh, then I'm back to bare metal, you see. But to stop it flash rusting, I use a zinc um, etch, spritz that, wipe it down, and it covers it with a phosphor, phosphor coating to make sure it doesn't flash rust while I'm working on other things. But anyway, what I wanted to do, a couple of things, I wanted to get something more permanent on there because this is obviously a long-term restoration. Uh, obviously the ideal thing is spraying an epoxy primer on there, but uh, I wanted something that I didn't have to spray because then it meant masking off everything and so I wanted something I wanted a brush. But also helped with the rust control and stopping flash rust. So I'm gonna use a rust encapsulator by brush just to seal off the bare metal areas to kind of hold it uh, in that uh, state until I get round to scuff sanding that uh, rust encapsulator, epoxy priming and then top coating on the underside with whatever protective coating I've decided to use, maybe a Worth product or I'm even thinking um, by suggestion in the comments of using the Raptor uh, bed liner stuff that can be tinted to the body colour which is kind of a nice feature. Um, that's something we'll get to in future. I've got some questions for you guys on what you think the most appropriate um, finish would be under there. Uh, so anyway, that being said, let me show you the other little thing I wanted to address before I get onto that part. All right, as you can see, uh, taking uh, that's just I shot a little bit of spare primer on there that I had lying around just to just to seal it up. That's. Uh, Gonna be all scored up in a minute. But anyway, um, so it's all down to bare metal under here, right down to the underside. Well, trust me, I haven't got a good line at the moment, but underside of this frame's all clean. Up here in this pocket area, I spent a lot of time yesterday with wire brushing attachments on my angle, um, my little die grinder, angled down die grinder. But as you can see, up here, there's been some earlier repairs. This is all pretty solid, but kind of a naff welding job. You know, very spotty. You know, like he's done a bit here, left a bit, done a bit, left a bit. Also, as you can see, after I started scraping on rust holes that he's missed. This is good solid metal here, but this just bugs the hell out of me. And this kind of sloppy welding job. It, you know, in this big scheme of things, I'm, I suppose it don't matter, but it just bugs me. While I'm in here, why don't I just cut and put a nice clean properly welded patch in there i don't like the way he's lapped it over and it'd be much nicer if it had butt jointed it and smoothed everything out so it just looked like this and also look at this horrible thing see look at that he's he's spot welded it spot welded, and left big bloody gaps there so i'm definitely cutting that out there's one here as well that has been blended into this upper lip and that was obviously a repair. I don't think I'm going to get into messing with this, that's kind of unnecessary. I'll try and uh, finish welding this up and feather it and make it look more pleasing. Get rid of this naffy piece of rubbish 
and just try and tidy this up while I've got the opportunity. It's a little bit um, of work, but I don't know, while I'm in here, and then eventually this, this cut this corner off, replace this. This is all solid here, right up until there though, it's corroded. So that is the job for today. I'll try and get as far as I can on that, and then coat all of the exposed metal with a, uh, a thin coat of uh, platinum rusting caps there, just so I don't have to worry about this flash rusting and keep having to treat it with the zinc coating. So that's, that's what I got planned today. Um, let's think. Uh, like I say, I'm obviously gonna take care of these holes here, but what I'm thinking, just cut a patch here, right? Well, I'm really not sure yet. Let's just see how we get on. I might do a kind of experimental cut, see what's going on behind this, because this is a little concerning that someone's just slapped that on there and it's just not hiding a load of rubbish under there. This is um, this is a, um, the outer part of the uh, underside here and then there's an inner part that's good. So maybe there's just a, probably what I'm thinking, this metal when it's under here is all corroded and crappy. So he's just stuck that on there. So well, let's just see, I'll make a patch up, do an exploratory cut and then see what we come up with. Gives it a kind of a natural join here, and then we'll cut along here. Very interesting to see what's behind here, you know. See? Look at that. Not too bad about that, but look at all that crap. All dirt and feel, obviously it's been getting in through these kind of holes, you know. Inner fender's fine. But I'll show you what he's done here. It really annoys me when they do this. It's just a cheap ass way of doing it. So there you go, there's his patch, right? That way round, okay. I don't know whether he missed that hole or he just tried, he went, oh, sorry, I can't be bothered, I'm going home now, and just slap a load of sealer on it. But from the inside, I actually don't look too bad. See? That's solid metal there. So what was he doing? He missed the hole, and that's a curious one, that one, because let's see what's behind here, because he of course I've lapped it over, causing a, causing a moisture trap, essentially. I mean, <laughs> there's a little rust hole there. There's a little rust hole right there. But you slap that big bit of metal on there, a lot of surface rust, but nothing really that he could have done a little minor patch here and there. That's just lazy, that is. That's just, yeah, just laziness. Look, so, good solid metal, a few small holes around the perimeter, one of which he's completely missed, and that bloody ugly patch. So I'm glad, let me give you a close up of what we got behind there in that little chamber. Another Christmas gift from the missus. It's all right, isn't it? Okay. All right. Very glad I did this. Got all this crap under here. here. Gives us a chance. Obviously, I'm going to do this anyway. 
even if I didn't have this, is inject uh, a frame like, um, what's it, uh, you know, a frame rush treatment inside the frame. I can't think of the name of it now, but anyway, so get all that cleaned out. There you go. So we'll get a nice butt weld up there. Um, it's really unnecessary for me to take this one out because I don't want to get into this inner lip. These uh, nuts are working fine that are there, so it's really unnecessary. I'm just going to make good this. So I'll put a couple of more spots here, clean this up, put some more, and sort of feather it and blend it, and then do a nice butt weld here and a nice butt weld along here and here and then tidy all this muck up um, let me see how we get on i might end up just cutting that one out as well uh, i don't want to get into this um, shock absorber mount that he's done a semi decent job here he's at least attempted to grind the weld up nicer but at least it's complete it's not spotty you know so anyway Let's get this all welded up. We'll clean this up first, and then I'll shoot. I'll I'll shoot some uh, I don't know copper primer in there for the moment. But I will inject stuff in later. Oh. All right, I'm thing about it. Here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to avoid this shock mount here because even though it's not the best, I think I can probably tidy it up a little bit. You know, blend it, and then obviously once the under seal's on. Uh, take this cart further up towards where it meets the inner fender here uh, all the way along okay so I'll make that corner my weld point okay and then I will cut this one out this will be a little step here I'll cut this one out and butt it onto this this one here so we don't have this kind of ugly ridge here. That's the plan. Up the end here, I'll put, I'm sorry I don't have to deal with this corner, I don't know when I'm off camera right now, but I'll cut it somewhere like that. But right now I need to know where that point is because I don't want to cut through into the inner fender, you see. So I'm just using a bit of metal as a kind of a depth gauge. So that's how far up it is. So if I hold back just a smidge there, if I cut to about there, make sure it's, do a different one there. This acts as like a little depth gauge, you see, and then we just hold it back. I think about there we should be safe. Mark that cross. Let us know in the comments. Um, I was watching some guy's videos the other day and he made a comment that uh, to his viewers, you know, he's doing something similar to an old man, you know. I hope, you know, I hope you're okay with seeing all these videos, every single welding video. If you're not, if you, if you get bored of the welding videos, then let me know. a bit down from that actually that's a little close yeah just so do you want to see every step you know what I mean I mean I don't have to film every step but a bit close there I think but I think we'll be all right let's cut that out and see where we go right I cut that little strip off but again I just wanted to emphasize perfect example why you don't want to just weld a patch this is his patch straight over da -da old metal like that you've got to cut that out and yeah and that's another good example of why you know when you're doing a lap weld you know and you might pinch weld things together is to use a, um, a weld through primer in the back there where metal is meeting metal because it's just a uh, a perfect area where moisture can trap and then eventually rust out so if you're having rust repairs done either by you or by someone else make sure that they're cut out and butt welded otherwise you know five ten years down the line all that lovely work that you've had done they just kind of dissipate but look at that 
So that's something I'm going to be working on in this car. You know, any patches, suspicious patches, I'm cutting them out. Because that, that's naff, that. All right. Oh, this is what I think I'll do. Cut this one all the way along top, just shy of that ridge, okay? Cut it down here. I'll tidy this little corner up here with a few, you know, blend it, make that look nicer. Cut this yucky weld out just above the uh, shock mount. Cut that straight across there and then we'll do a nice butt weld all the way along uh, so it's flush, okay? So that'll look a lot nicer. Little work, but a lot nicer. And then we'll tackle this monster here. This one up here, uh, and then I'm gonna, this is where actually it goes to single wall. So I can feel here that it's okay. I'll check that. Let me, I'll, I'll say that for a bit later on here. This is a good example of how things start to grow. <laughs> uh, not too bad actually. So I've cut that extra section out here. Um, I say holding it back from the inner fender here. But uh, obviously where he's repaired this uh, suspension mount, he's done the same thing. He's just lapped a piece of steel here. So you can see there's three layers. You've got this one, this one, and then the uh, suspension mount. So the one in the middle, he hasn't even bothered removing. You can see it right there. Focus. You can see it right there. So here's what I'm thinking. So I'm constantly adjusting the game plan as we dig in deep, you see. So we've got this one out. That's not a problem. We've got this one out. So with this little step here, it makes it kind of awkward. So it makes sense to cut this all the way through on that lip, right? Get the main panel in and then re-weld onto this uh, mount here. Because all the mount is perfectly good under here. There's nothing wrong with it. It's all spot welded. It's perfectly clean. Uh, but just then, so repair this and then re-seam along here and then it will look much nicer, much more tidy. So a little bit more work, but I think worth the effort. There we go, see, much cleaner now. I'll just get those edges nice and tidy and clean and as straight as possible. Um, and <clears throat> you can see now we're only dealing with two, the um, metal from the support, the suspension mount here, the shock mount, uh, and then the frame, the inner, not frame, um, uh, outer wheel arch metal. So uh, the only section I've got to butt up to now is, well, the, the, what I'm going to butt up to now is just what we've got. So everything will look level rather than two different levels. The only little area here is this little tidy area. I'll tidy that up and tidy this area up and they, that'll be pretty easy. Um, and then come in with a nice patch and that should blend in lovely that. So I'm well happy that uh, I cut that extra piece out. Took, it took a little bit because you're going through, through level, three levels there. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna treat this little corner here. See, we had a, just in there. See that little bit of rust there? I'm gonna treat that with some, uh, where is it? I can't think of the stuff called now. It's a rust treatment, you know. It neutralizes the rust. I think um, does zinc to it or something, whatever. And then, um, I'll shoot some copper primer in here just for yucks, but then it will get injected. Everything's gonna get injected in these hidden box frames for a box frame coating, you know, so there you go. It's uh, Permatex, this stuff, um, just in all the little r affected rusty areas, so, so it will kill it. Right, we've tidied all the edges up. Uh, what I'm gonna try is a different method um, for making our patch. I'm just gonna stick a bit of card on here and then rub where I've made the cut, you see, and then transfer that to metal. So let me stick this guy on. Hopefully this will stick all right. Right. Let's see how that works. is is a little punch kind of the blue is coming off where the line is there's anything there I guess 
Right, there's my patch. I've just kind of pushed it in there loosely. Um, and I'm going to transfer that to the metal. And there's going to be a lot of uh, off-camera, uh, you know, fitting and sanding and fitting and sanding and all that stuff to get it to fit with a nice gap ready for welding. So I'm not going to film all that, but you get the idea. It's just tedious, that. So, um, you, you know, you get a good result if you're willing to put the time in, I guess. So uh, I uh, cut a piece of metal out, put my patch, uh, you know, the paper patch, laid it on there, I actually taped it on there, marked my line. And it's the black line, this red line, ignore it, it's from something else. So I'm just gonna cut this. You can actually cut it with the with the left and right hand tin steps. It's a little tricky, but I'm gonna go on the line there and uh, probably waist side of the line so I, I can do some trimming and playing around with it. Right, I've decided to cut this patch in two after all, uh, but join it so it won't, you won't see the seam in a minute, but reason being, I'm just trying to make it easier as possible. So this guy's gonna go in here, you see. Okay, but welded near. And to try and get everything lined up over this huge amount of space here, it was really tricky. Plus it's got this twist in it, see? I have to kind of twist it to copy the way the body is curved here because I wanna hide this seam on this bottom edge, you see. So I thought, you know what? I'll weld that guy in now, get that all stable, and then I can work on the other one. I copper prime the back, even though, like I say, I'm gonna put some cavity stuff inside this chamber here. So uh, let's get that um, uh, set up there and magnetized on there and we'll get that welded in. While I've set it up here, I'm gonna spot weld here, here, get all this and then I can bend it in and flex it um, and it will, I'll spot weld up here and then start working my way across the bottom edge here. It's kind of a tricky little guy because of what's going on here. Again, making sure we level as much as possible. Um, and let's see what we can accomplish here today. So you can see I'm just uh, working on here just to stabilize that and using a screwdriver to make sure we get as level as possible. start tap welding up this end. Let's do that now. Right, see those series of spots? Never look that great, you know, but uh, once all ground out, will be like nice. I want to get a lot of strength in that top there so I can um, just bend that in position on the bottom right there and so it can form uh, to the car to the way it's supposed to be. So. Anyway, I'm going to clean these goggles because they're filthy. Hold on. That was a little tricky, especially getting this bottom edge just trued up and pinched in. That came out quite nice, actually. A little, few tiny little pits here. Again, I left the weld a little proud just because I didn't want to get too thin and just stuck some primer over it for the time being. I'll squirt all this uh, bare metal area with zinc phosphate uh, because I'm not sure when I'm going to get to do this patch, which is this guy. This guy will go in here. Let me, uh, this guy will go in there, you see? I just thought that breaking it into two made more sense, you know, because um, this, was, this was tricky in of itself because of this severe kind of curved bend and then um, welding it all into place. So... Yeah, pretty successful. And then, so once that goes on, like that, then I'll make a little wrap piece that comes up probably about three quarters of an inch from this uh, um, sh uh, shock mount. So now then it will turn it all back to a much more factory appearance. As far as this other patch uh, is concerned, I'm just gonna do it in the traditional manner. Made my patch here, uh, you can see that. Uh, and I just transferred it over to get rid of that horrible mess and do a flush butt, butt weld so it's nice and smooth. Right, that was a little bit of a fussy devil to get just level. Um, it's not perfectly level yet, so where it is level, I'll just put a little tack, move the magnet, and do a bit of leveraging to make sure we um, level it as we go and also stop too much build up of too much heat. Um, 
I'll be welding it both sides as well because that's on the inside. That'll be seen, you see. So we've got to make it really good on the inside. Um, so let's start tack welding that guy up. Okay, hopefully you can see that. You see that this is the other weld, this wasn't me, but you can see the welds coming on quite nice here. A little tidy that little area, there's a tiny little pinhole here, and then I've got some grinding to do up here. Uh, but I just went down to one, what would I go to? 80. But I wanted to show you my technique for um, taking the grind, the grinding the welds down. Now, as I've said before, we've got to make sure these two are absolutely level before you weld it. So take your time to do that. But what I've done using kind of like a guide coat, spray the whole thing. It, I just got the copper um, weld through primer that I used. Um, you can use anything, I guess. Something quick dry and spray the whole area. That will define your weld, you see. Right, hopefully you can see that. I've left this uh, so you can see what I'm gonna do. Hopefully I, the camera's not in my way, but um, I've kind of pulled away from using the grinder because it is so aggressive. Uh, for taking the heads off so okay so I really like this little finger sander here this 3 8 uh, little belt sander come in at this direction you come in here you'll tend to you know obviously the profile of this gouge it out so if you come in here and just gently take the tops of those welds off the paint that you've painted on kind of acts as a guide coat and it can tell you when you hit the metal either side and as soon as you've got that you just gently finish off with um, my little angle grinder with, uh, what did I put on there? 80 grit and then a conditioning disc. So I'll show you how I do it. Let me move the camera again. I've got 60 grit 3M paper on this. This is not crappy paper, it's a good paper. So I'm just gonna take the tops of those welds off. Right, so I'll demo what I do on that small section now. I'm not saying I haven't got to come back. There's a few pinholes I wanna pick up, but just wanted to show you. See the heads there so and it will tell you if you end up going off then you'll scratch the metal you see and it'll show you. just get it as near as darn it there's a little bit more there that's as much as i want to do with that one then i come back with my little die grinder here with an 80 grit just to kind of blend it um, now I've got a red 80 um, a red um, conditioning disc so just about see just fine line here you might see a few pinholes here and there um, it's a kind of a balance between uh, making it look really nice and strength obviously you don't want to keep welding and sanding and welding and sanding and welding and sanding so it looks perfect because you might end up thinning metal too much so this is the underside it just looks so much nicer than those big ugly beads just sitting on top and obviously once this is painted um, and uh, epoxy primed and all that stuff and then the undercoat you'll never see this so very happy with that off camera I'm gonna go inside and and spot weld back through on the other side and smooth it and really try and get it real smooth and nice on the inside because that's where obviously it gets painted and it probably be visible so okay so uh, I welded those patches in that one I've still got to make good that top edge here see where that funky one is here See, that's what was there. You see that ugly thing? And look what it was covering. That tiny little spot there. He slapped that great big thing, ugly thing on there. Instead of cutting it out, he just whacked that straight over and that sat there. So I put mine in there. 
and I'm, I'm trying to be very careful about sanding and stuff so I don't make the metal too thin and just it's just going to look a lot better I didn't get a chance to put any rust encapsulator on but the uh, uh, fast etch will uh, preserve this while I'm working on it so uh, and then like I say uh, I think I said at the beginning of the video I'm going to start coating things in rust encapsulator to tide me over until I start priming and then eventually undercoating um, so this area also I've got a little patch here I've got a cut cut that on that'll be straightforward also some funky little end thing someone's done here I'm going to take care of that this is what he trapped all behind there look at that so that's that one and this one looks like someone had cut something out and then gave up and then just slapped a bit of metal straight over the top of it you know didn't really try and make it look nice either here look there's three layers there see that all mushed together that's the uh that's the suspension mount thing you know total rust trap really on hindsight actually uh what i might do i've got to stop today because i've been going at this a lot longer than i thought now i've got my patch here right i've got this ugly ass thing what i'm thinking i'll do because i'm suspicious of what's under this little slight lap you know just going by what they've done before um i you know um what i'm half thinking of doing is cutting another patch incorporating all of that and cutting it out but i will see in the next video because this is obviously turning into another two-part welding video but uh anyway well i hope you enjoyed that video today um yeah it, again always turns out to be a little more time consuming than you really think but once i'm getting used to the spot welder and setting it up i'm turning the power down just a, just a little bit you know uh, I'm getting a little bit of control. Just taking the if they've got a series of uh, recommended settings on the on the welder, but I'm just turning it down just a smidge. You know, give me a bit of control. I run out of MIG wire part way through, and I switched to a Lincoln um, 025 wire. And I don't know, maybe I'm just dreaming, but it seemed to work better. Uh, but again, I'm not an experienced welder by any means. Uh, this is fairly new to me. I'm just uh, kind of just doing what I think is logical, watching some videos myself, getting an idea of what to do, and um, going from there, really. Um, so, I say it's just going to be a two part video as well, restoring this section. Uh, I'm still working on the editing of these uh, part two of the door repair. I've just got to get that uh, uh, piece all finalized in and uh, drain holes cut and all that good stuff. But as I know, so I'm jumping from two different videos because that's who who I am. <laughs> because that's, uh, I just uh, wanted to get on with this because I, I, you know, wanted to do the uh, rust encapsulator and that led on to these patches. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna take this off and go and have a cold beer. And as you can see, I kept mum's shirt nice and clean. There you go, mum. Um, well, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Probably the door one or this one. Depends on what I feel like doing, basically. All right. Have a good one. Cheers. Take care.